This is the first video in a series on the topic of our evolution. In a collaboration with the great channels Stefan Milo, Henry the Paleo Guy, and North02. So after watching this video, you can follow the series on their channels to continue the story. Apes aren't just our closest living relatives, we are apes. And the non-human apes were among the last primates on our evolutionary tree that are, and were, mostly adapted to life in the trees. Despite being confined to the jungles and forests, the apes were able to migrate throughout and colonise the old world long before humans ever stood foot outside of Africa. In Africa, during the earliest parts of the Miocene, the world's very first apes started to appear. These animals, however, shared many features belonging to both apes and monkeys, and perhaps would be mistaken for a monkey if you ever saw one. The most well known out of the apes from this period was Proconsul, of which there is a pretty well preserved fossil found on Kenya's Rasinga Island. Examination of their skeleton shows they would have climbed trees and branches on all four, something only seen in monkeys today. However, probably lacked a tail, and had facial features similar to that of apes. During the Miocene, ape fossils are comparatively common compared with monkeys, and it seemed that many of these monkey-like apes occupied niches filled by monkeys today. Apes are divided into two groups, the great apes and the lesser apes, which are slightly more monkey-like, the only living representatives being the gibbon family. They diverged from the great apes around 20 million years ago, and it is thought that these ape-like monkeys may have been close to the common ancestor of these two groups. Around 17 million years ago, a very important catalyst to primate evolution occurred. Africa's climate became more seasonal, and some areas became much drier, with new grasslands and savannas opening up. More water being frozen at the poles also made sea levels drop, exposing a land bridge between Eurasia and Africa. This land bridge saw a large amount of migration from many different mammal species. Joining apes on this journey into the new land were elephants, rodents, antelope, and even aardvarks. Apes thrived in Eurasia, spreading out and quickly becoming more successful than any other time in their history. Like any creature colonising a new habitat, they became quite diverse as well. In less than 2 million years, a geological blink of an eye, non-African apes were numbering at least 8 genres. During this period of unstable climate in Africa, Miocene Europe was actually quite warm and tropical, being a very attractive habitat to these travelling apes. One of the first apes known to have lived in Europe was Gryphopithecus, that is best known from Turkey, but its range reached as far as Austria and Germany. By 14 million years ago, they had spread as far as Spain, with Pierre Lepithecus being found in Catalonia. While the European apes were travelling west, many apes travelled east into Asia, one of the best preserved of which was called Sivapithecus, which was quite possibly a basal member of a subfamily of great apes known as Pongine, this group only having one living member in Southeast Asia, the orangutan. The orangutan are our most distantly related great ape cousin, and it is thought to have diverged from the human lineage about 12 million years ago, backed up by DNA evidence. However, this could have been even longer ago, as Gryphopithecus, for instance, is very occasionally classed as a proto-orangutan. During the Miocene and later, the orangutan's family had many more species and a much larger range. It also contained the largest ape known to have lived, Gigantopithecus, that could have weighed as much as two gorillas, and been well over two meters tall although size estimates vary due to the creature only being known from incomplete remains. Gigantopithecus thrived in the Miocene jungles of Asia from 9 million to 6 million years ago, but it reduced in number until going completely extinct 100,000 years ago. Unfortunately, this was the same story for the rest of the ape family, now only leaving two species of orangutan, both endangered. European apes were also declining by the late Miocene due to a large climate shift changing the warm tropical forests into more mild, drier woodlands and grasslands, a climate that is closer to that of current day Europe. Many of the apes not being able to cope with these new habitats died out. However, some were able to make adequate adaptations to survive the initial changes at least. Oreopithecus, for instance, was able to cling on until 7 million years ago, living on an island that now makes up part of Italy. However, Oreopithecus would also eventually go extinct, leaving Europe apeless, until the arrival of archaic humans millions of years later. Although the apes in Europe eventually went extinct, a number of paleontologists now believe that the continent may have played a crucial role in hominid evolution, and in turn, human evolution. The great apes that humans come from are the African apes, chimpanzees, bonobos, and gorillas, which all had a common ancestor about 9 million years ago. The problem is that where the more derived forms of ape came from is inconclusive. Many of the apes found in Africa in the mid-Miocene seem to have been quite primitive, 
and the more advanced forms seem to have existed in Europe as much as 2 million years prior to when you would have first started to see these creatures in Africa. A European ape called Dryopithecus that just happens to be the first ape ever discovered on the continent, as well as another called Aranopithecus found in Greece, are thought to be good candidates for the European ape that could have given rise to the African apes. Both of these animals sharing many derived features that are only really seen in great apes. Dryopithecus also had a frontal sinus for producing mucus, a feature shared by gorillas, chimps and of course humans, but not by orangutans, showing that they may be well situated at the base of African apes. It is believed that Aranopithecus, Dryopithecus, or one of their close relatives crossed back over into Africa from Europe and gave rise to the gorillas and chimps. However, although this theory has gathered some traction, it is still controversial and not widely accepted. In the last 15 years or so, there have been discoveries of more derived apes in Africa that may negate this hypothesis, like Nacalopithecus that was found in Kenya and which the researchers claim is very close to the common ancestors of gorillas, chimps and humans. It also seems that this ape may have been closely related to Aranopithecus, which offers good evidence that African apes did evolve in Africa, but that there were offshoots that may have got as far as Europe. However, for now, where African apes came from is just one of those things that no one really knows, and more discoveries will be needed in order to find out. Unfortunately, as is the same with much of the African ape story, the fossil evidence for the divergence of humans from apes is scarce. But the animal known as Sahelanthropus is probably very close to the common ancestor of humans and chimps, and lived about 7 to 6 million years ago. Around 6 million years ago, it is believed that an animal like this may have had to make adaptations to spend at least some of its time out of the jungle where the other apes live today, and survive out on the savannah. This new habitat would have created selective pressures that would have ended up making them more human. But to find out about this, you will need to head over to Henry the Paleo Guys and Stefan Milo's channels, as they will be going into depth on the Australopithecines, the creatures that shared both human and ape characteristics. A massive thank you goes to Fozzleworth, David van der Roost, Karim, and all my other patrons for their support. If you would like to support me as well, then you can go to Patreon and make a pledge. If you liked the video and would like to be updated of future content, then consider subscribing. Thank you for watching.